Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi. Ve min ittaba'u da'i ila yevmuddin. Rabbi şrahi sadri ve sirli amri ve ahl ahdeten min nisani. Yafqahu qabı. First of all, I must thank Brother Sal. It is idea. And things happen first by an idea. And I thank the society and everybody has contributed of being that Gada exists. Thing doesn't happen by itself, by effort. And everyone has share and offer to make that event. I'm thanking him. Thank you for you, because without you coming, there was no big talk. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. Okay, after that, our subject today is around this book, Islamic uh, Economic, the ultimate alternative. I remember about maybe 30, 40 years ago, I was given a, a talk about usury. We've heard the ayat, we say, Ahalallahu al-bay'ah, haram al very clear. Nothing like as clear as in Quran, like this. Everybody knows it, even the non-Muslim know. But the problem is, what is bayah, what is it? This is the problem. And somebody, after I was talking about usually, he came to me and said, can you advise me a book about Islamic economy? I couldn't find a book at that time. And from that time, I had in my mind to produce such a book. That's why I produced that book to be a curriculum for anybody who wants to study Islamic economics. In the book, you will find four parts. The first part is the most important part. Is I lay down the, the, the belief foundation. Why is, why is that? Before that, I will talk about the source of knowledge. I'm coming to sit here. You study. Anybody study economics? Oh, yeah, perfect. When you study economics, regardless what it is, I'll come to it later. The, the problem is the source of knowledge. Where you get your knowledge from? We've heard the Quran. It's a knowledge. And uh, I will catch I will keep repeating that two words. Ahalla Allah al wa haram al From what authority? Where did that knowledge come from? And if we find this source for this knowledge, what is the jungle of knowledge among the human being? Where is that? I will tell you very clear. I like to make things simple. Source of knowledge either divine since Adam alayhi salam divine knowledge or human brain and, ex and human experience there's two parts of source of knowledge there's no third either divine or human production and human experience then when you talk, I will learn or teach, you have to decide what field you are in. Either you talk in divine knowledge, there is a methodology for putting this knowledge or exchanges this knowledge or even differ in this knowledge. When you're talking about human and human experience, that's a difference. For people, for you, for who study economic, I will tell you one difference. If you open any economic text, they're talking about the economic problem. What is the economic problem? And this, the foundation, not of the economic, for science. I will come to science later because the word science is very problematic. They talk 
about economic problem. And I'm talking about this economic problem as a pillar of science. And the economic, I'm not coming now to social or human science, it's a science. What is the economic problem? Economic problem that the sources is limited. The sources is limited. And the human desire or desire, the word desire is unlimited. And there is a problem. Okay. We're going to solve that problem. Say so we human. We're making this subject of economic to solve the economic problem. Think about it as a whole deep, deep form. How can I realize default? I have to understand idea based or any idea have a base and structure, like any other thing. Maybe metaphorically, but Anything has a base and structure. That is the base of the way non-believer of God foundation. That is one of them, in economic or in science. The other thing is, they say, economic is positive, not normative. I remember when I first been introduced to study economic, we sit for about an hour trying to find out what is this problem is normative and positive. I discover later this is the, the principle of science in general. Here come why science? It's a very important people sometimes take mix it between science and knowledge. It's a completely different. Science is a branch of knowledge. And even the word scientific, when I search this word, is a very new word. It wasn't introduced to the English dictionary a little late. Then we have a science. Then science is a, the source of knowledge is a human and a human experience. If that to, for us human to realize what knowledge we are faced in, is this economic problem exist even a lot of Muslim? If I told them this economic uh, problem is a default, is false, he's really upset. Even he's a Muslim because he has loyalty to what he studied. He's academic, he's got a PhD or master's degree, he studied that. He studied this and being told as this as a fact. I have to be very careful. Linguistic and the fact we produce, not the fact itself, the fact and the source of the fact. How can I justify that? Look for the Islamic economic, that's why I put too much in the first part. I introduce it in a, in a very small linguistic principle. We have specificity, or this is my phrase, and specificity and natural balance. I'm not going to convince you by the natural balance and specificity. If that does not exist, we wouldn't be here today. How many million of years this universe exists? If it is natural balance and specificity does not exist, that world wouldn't be here today. Then that natural balance and specificity or precision versus the Islamic economic. I call this in uh, an other the missing link. Neither we Muslim recognize this, which is upsetting, nor the non-Muslim, I don't call 
Western or Eastern. Now the world is, is mixed. I will call Muslim and non-Muslim. Because Muslim is very clear. We're dependent on divine knowledge. Divine knowledge from the Quran and so now we have its methods. The other uh, source of knowledge, as we uh, uh, valid to us today, the most uh, movement, active move, movement which have produced a lot of knowledge is the secular. It has too much uh, translation, but I, I don't translate it. Who create secularism? Call it secular. You can't translate it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this Quran, you can't translate it. It's a Quran, it's, it's linguistic, a name. You can't change it. Then the source of knowledge is either divine or human. Then it's two types of knowledge. And this is a part of the missing link we are missing in both worlds. Another thing is I would like to introduce in the first part is, is the base of belief. This thing is called, I call it, the equation of existence. Very important. What is the equation of existence? Equation of existence, existence has either human or non-human. Some people say the difference between the intellectual and uh, the senses and it's not. If you want to talk about it, where you get your knowledge from, this is important. Are you going to sit and think about it as a philosopher or take, give us what secular movement say? No. You have to decide which knowledge you're going to, which source of knowledge you are talking from. Then, the equation of existence, human and non-human. Very strong. Don't let anyone to mix it in that. Okay. In the Quran, we say, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا He created for you, as one side, whatever in the earth. Then these two parts, human and non-human, is being created for human. This is one part of the equation. Then, when you look to yourself, or look to your full fellow human, make sure that you are different than anything else. How different? That everything else has been created for you. And the sharing with you other human. Not only which are living with you since Adam till the day of judgment. We, we all share. That's making liability for us to protect the resources. Because it's not for only for me. It's for me, for the, the people before me, for the people coming after me. Okay. Not only being created for you, but subjected for you. Make it suitable for use for your use. Imagine we've got all these things being created for us, but we can't use it. No, it's been made in balance, in balance, to serve a human. It's, it's very nice now. I feel very proud. Everything else is being created for me and subjected for me. What I am in the beginning created for? That question popping by itself straight away. If the whole thing is being created for me, why I am created for? Again, 
you have to rely in a divine knowledge. In the Quran, say, Wama khalaqtul jannah. Wama is limited. Wama khalaqtul jannah. Jinn first. Well, ins, illa liabulu. In the only job for you in this life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the equation. Two sides. I call it equation of existence. As a Muslim, this equation is very important for you, which from it, the energy for you to act. You have to, when you act, you have to put this in front of you. You are specifically special. Everything else for you. And you is being here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? To? Now we, we, we agree in that. How we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To fulfill the purpose of our existence. Otherwise we just come here and go and lose our life. How is very simple. If we see the difference between us as a creature and any other creation, one important difference that we have a will. Any other creature does not have the same will. From that will, we have a choice. Other, no. You don't have a choice. In order to serve us, if they have a choice, they won't be suitable for us. They may be served one time and the other time is not. Then, because we have a choice, that's we different. Then, worshipping comes within the choice I've been given. That's why I introduce again, anything you have a choice, there is a test. Then everything you have a choice, there is a test. People sometimes underestimate, they say, well, I have a choice to drink coffee or tea. What is the test here? Understanding the equation of existence, if you prefer tea or coffee, you have to understand this, it doesn't come out of nothing, it's instinct. Something inside you has make you to like coffee or prefer coffee than tea. Then when you take that choice, make sure you use your choice to help you, even you satisfy your likeness for tea or coffee, to help you to achieve your purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything you have a chance. We go back to the Halallahu al-Bayah, Muharram al you have a choice. That's why you get the test. Only allow Bayah and you not allow Riba. And the word Ya'kuluna, one of the uh, things I, I realized, Ya'kuluna eat. You don't eat Riba. Because riba in, uh, is a prime in money. You use the money come from riba to buy food and eat. And this word eat, it's come from the Old Testament, eat, for the Bible, eat, for the Quran. Okay. See, the, the source of knowledge is the same, as constant. This is uh, about the first part. We've seen in economic or secularism or science have made this base of belief that the world is not 
balance what they want they put human to come and balance by producing this knowledge as a human knowledge you find in uh, economy in uh, social studies whatever it is I don't like call it social science I call it human science because the the social dimension in human is not uh, better than economic, for example. Why are you call it social? Call it economic. But it is to do with human. The other principle is they call human activity or social activity. I like to refute things strongly to bring the idea. There is no such thing called economic or social activity. Because economic and social science or sociology is a branch of knowledge. Human activity is fixed since Adam until the day of judgment. What is this activity? This is the real activity. Human eat, drink, marriage. We sit here, exchange knowledge. This is activity. But economic is a discipline, is a branch of knowledge, has academic side of it, not an activity. That's answer the question, you say, oh, this is old. Quran came from old time and it's not suitable for today. For today. Why? If you deal with human behavior, which you will see that word is uh, repeated in any economic uh, textbooks in the beginning to establish this is about human behavior. Okay, we'll talk about human behavior. Human behavior is fixed, no change. We eat, we eat. We will eat. The difference is with sometimes they mix up the way we eat, the way we cook, what we eat. Then the activity itself eat. Then if you want to, to organize human activities, you tell me within the rules of my existence for one purpose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what should I eat and why you should eat? That's it. But the way I make my meal is completely different. It depends on the social structure and what is available for technology, different. But the idea of organizing human activity has to be online to serve the purpose of his existence. Before you do things, you say, why I am here first? Then I decide I eat to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm eating, that's human activity. No economic or social. I'm eating. This is the real one. Then I should, while I'm eating, I should make sure this will fit with my purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To eat what has been described for me by God, He knows best. What should I eat and what I shouldn't? This is the base of belief. It's very important. You have the base of belief, and according to that base of belief, you have the structure. Do and don't. Come to the other side, normative and positive. They say positive is what it is normative what you should do and what you ought to as normative that's why they say science or economic is positive is not normative the result is no religion because as we say religion about worshiping Allah and dealing with your choice it tells you do and don't that's normative. 
That's why they, in the beginning, they decide it is positive, not normative, to stop any side of religion. Then when you get this knowledge, you know first it's a human. And when you get this, you have to know what it is, the implication of that. Some people defend that blindly because you, you never think, you never had the knowledge. No, that's why Islamic economic doesn't refute uh, positive, it's okay, but it doesn't uh, stopping or limiting normative, you say, no normative. Why? We open mind, we accept even to argue with secular, but they will never accept to argue Muslim or divine knowledge because they don't they don't de believe in God and that will bring us the story the history you know secularism as a elite movement came as a result of struggling with the church they were competing to uh, running or administrating the society the church was a bit abusive, uh, went over the top. They have a crash, and I respect the, the movement. But when the, the movement win, they have to produce explanation of the bomb. They had no idea. There was a choice to, like, the to get what the church was saying, there is a God and God created the world and said they don't want that. That's why they produce all this uh, called human uh, science, they call it sociology. I think this is uh, a base to start with. And I made a, a, a completely first part before I talk about any economic issue. Then once you have your base strong, we go for Islamic economy. We say the source is divine. And I would say the first thing as an alternative to economic I introduce the Islamic monotony triangle. Completely different. People sometimes say economic is a very difficult subject. Economic is, is no difficult at all as a subject. The basic or the core of uh, economic is the call it the law of demand and supply. Demand and supply is not only economic, it's a rule of life. We accept the demand and supply, and this is the core of economics. They come after that, they divide it between uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics, it's the same theory. If you look at it deeply, it's the same thing. Even the schedule is the same. Macro, microeconomic and microeconomic, and then now there is another branch called monotony economy. And in both, you, you, you get the schedule of demand and supply. The whole thing is around the demand supply, and the two schedule about what? Goods and money. What money is, they don't like to talk about it. They talk about function of money. Of course, I can't give you the whole <laughs> idea because I'm nearly exhausted more than uh, about the hour now. I'll go quickly now. But I, I, uh, important for me is the first part. We'll come to the, uh, the, monotary, the Islamic monotary triangle. The head triangle is the concept of money. Money. What is money? 
They don't like to talk about them. What is money today? The dollar? Stone? What is it? The, 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 the head of the Bank of England tell him, what is money? I was sitting one day in a That's good, 35 minutes, you know. Yeah, because <laughs> we start late. I'm trying to give you as much as, I, I wouldn't dream to give you the whole thing, but I'll give you the, the, the basic to go through the books and get the information you, you're asking for. Money is very important. I will claim two things. No understand money, no hope to understand any economic issue. I will repeat. People say, well, money. Money is, is what we use as money. No. Money is very important. If you don't understand money, you have no hope of understanding any economic. Then what is money? I introduced the, the whole history of money and I explained it. What is money? Even the word money is not very accurate. We are the Muslim who call it Thaman. The idea of Thaman, even the Western, far away from understanding what is Thaman. Thaman, if you, uh, I introduced the word priceless, Thamania, which is not an English word, but I had to express the meaning created this word priceless from price priceless money they say the function of money but money today is an illusion and believe me and, uh, one day we're going to talk about the money subject in detail the money today become the exact illusion. Maybe you wonder, and you say, how he's talking? Our brother, he will say, Allah al-bayam, Money today, in my pocket and in your pocket, is the exact usury which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, it's haram. Of course, when people say, okay, you don't use money, I use money, I have a bank account. But this is a, a completely different. How will you deal with it? How we deal with it? What is haram and halam? Is haram and halal is one thing, and how you deal with it is another thing. Our religion is very organized. Okay, we are here in England, it's easy for me. Most of you have a bank note. Get the bank note out and read what's in it. You will find statement from the, 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 the Bank of England president, or what do you call it, Muhafiz of Bank of Merkazi, say, I promise to pay the payroll, the sum of 5, 10, 20, 50. Self written. English people, they respect their history. They didn't take it away. Most of countries, they take away. Still existing dollar, maybe in the old dollar, I would stun. When you go home or now, get the, the note and say, if I'm talking, you will find that I promise to pay the pair five pounds. Okay, take that one. Who signed it? The central bank president. Go to the central bank, say in the city. Tell him, fulfill your promise. What do you think he's going to do? It's a promise. It's, a, it's the most legislative, powerful paper. And it's been accepted by the government and the Bank of England. They don't write things for nothing. It has a meaning. That promise was one day valid. But because the development, I don't like to, uh, to use development, but how money changed. 
over the years. They still keep that promise. It's about money. The money today is default. Okay, if that about money, and I say the word even linguistically is not accurate, we call it price, then what money is? I will put a question for you. You breathe air, who produced the air? You drink water, who produced the water? We eat food, who produced the food? You have to have a, a full concept of life. Who produces these things? And in what sense? And for human, as we said, being created for purpose, does God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created us and make our duty to worship him, he produced everything for us we needed or not? Or there is a default? as in the economic problem. You answered the question. Then come that, the other question, if you understand money and how important money to human society, you have to have the question, does God create money or not? If you fully understand how important money is, I will tell you, not as an experience, as witness, as realizing. Without money, human would have never reached the stage we are in today. Full stop. Then money, like cells, like it's very essential for human society. Then you answer the question, if God has created what it is. But respecting human brain, it's either God produced the money, or what is money, or human, or let it to human to produce it. Dealing with this, I call it, we will investigate. We are intellectual creature or entity, we investigate. We would first leave God created. Maybe God left it for human, and that's what is happening. See, as God prohibited, usually, he cannot produce money to be something he prohibited. Secondly, I discussed the stages of how money changed. It's become an illusion. But this illusion has the power of you obtaining any other thing. How can that in the logic? And if you see how bad money becomes, how, how unfair this caliber of value, money is the caliber of value, you go the field, work with fa uh, uh, the factor of production, labor, land, capital, work hard and produce apple or orange or fruit, or, and somebody sitting doing nothing, and get a paper and say, you buy all this factor of production, that doesn't exist in, in any logic. You can't accept that. And this is what happened today. It's become, money has become the exact usury. It's become an illusion. It's become an, an instrument to abuse human. You know how they control people today? If you, I, I, I don't like the, the word the conspiracy. Through the dollar, through the currency. If you today, of course you, you, you are in the social media, see how much the debt for the United States. 
And not only that, they put it in a meter in Washington, like challenging the whole world. How that, what that debt means? It's a dollar, debt. What that debt means? Have anybody think what, what debt means you have consumed something which you haven't produced. What the United States or the, 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 the rest of the world, the rich world, have the right to produce, to consume some from Africa when they have no food. And they, what allowed them to do that is a mighty dollar. This is money. Would you accept this is with Allah wish to reach the standard of making such an important instrument for human society to be abused in, in, in that level? I don't think so. I'm not going to talk about it in details, but I discuss it with here in a very details. Okay, this is one chance or either is being left to human and this is the result now. But if I say, no, I, I think God must produce, decide what is money. But for us a Muslim, you can't indulge in that by, by any way you say, I come and I'll tell you God has produced uh, money for human society. You have to have a proof. The proof is from the Quran and Sunnah. We have a very uh, restrict methods in order not to allow people just to reduce in knowledge, which uh, he cre he uh, claim it's a divine without being divine. We have a method. We have a Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has predicted. Not only the Quran, the way it's written, the scholar who explained it, everything is protected. Then we have a methodology. If I say, okay, I will rule out that God has left money for human beings. He have created that for people, for humans. Then give me the, the text, the Quran, the sun. I will tell you something very simple. No in details. One or two things to, to try to convince you, initial convince, and then you have, have to go and get more. The Prophet وسلم, have used gold and silver. Is the use of the Prophet le legally bound or not? If the Prophet وسلم, used it, that's it. It's illegally bound. It's a fact point. People say, okay, but that was all that. So what changed? Okay. With this, I give very strong example. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used swag. Anybody know swag? There are two spaces today, it's called swag as well. That's legalized using the swag or not? It does. If the Prophet used it, that's it. It's legal to use it. The point is not legal or not, is can any authority of the world to prevent using swag? Okay. Use the same. The Prophet used gold and silver. Can anybody prevent using gold and silver as currency? Okay. All the world legal system prevent but criminalize who used gold and silver. You might wonder, is that true? It's true. Because if you, the gold and silver, because Allah has created that, has its own power. That's this paper, or I don't call it paper, the legal tender we call it, would never exist with gold and silver. That's why preventing using 
gold, and silver. That's from the Sunnah of the Prophet There's other things, a lot of things. You put them all together, you get one conclusion. That's gold and silver is the currency. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it for human to use. One other ayah called Zuyina Linnas Hubb al-Shahwai Min al-Nisai Wal-Baneen Wal-Qanatiyya Al-Muqantarati Min al-Dahab wal I will try to translate it very quickly. Zuyina made attractive. Gold and silver has been put inside human attraction to it. I remember when we were studying Adam Smith and he was self-interest and he said the invisible hand. Are you aware of the invisible hand? I answer that is not an invisible hand. It's not only one invisible hand. It's an inner center. There is an inner center. This one of the things is, uh, which produce energy, uh, energy in that inner center is zinalinas. It's being attracted to human, the love of women. Without that, life would stop a long time ago. Number one, love for women. Love, love for uh, sibling, the new generation, reproduce. Without this, they, me and you wouldn't be existing today. Then everything is inside us, which create the energy for you to act. Why you come here today? There's something inside you, well, it goes with the brain and things which push you, you have to go there. That's the inner center. Inner center, create the energy. But this has been done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which drive you to do the activity. Then, hubb nisa love for women, love for generation, including men. Because I say, special women, what about men? It's including men, women and men. This attraction, which create the whole, the, 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 the family unit, which is the base of uh, human science, if you study human science. Number three, heaps of gold and silver. If love woman has a function, love of kids have function, what is the function of loving gold and silver? Even they call gold and silver is a, is a very lazy element. It has no uh, use application. But this is, I give you a reference from the Sunnah and reference from the Quran. And there is too many of them together. We're talking about the head of the triangle. The other side of the triangle, prohibition of usury. The third one is zakah, paying zakah. And I will tell you, the system of usury, or prohibition the prohibition of the usury, and the obligation of the guy cannot exist in one economy. That's why the, in, in the whole Muslim world, six, 36 country, they don't have a system for zakat. And they say it's difficult. You have a system for tax. More complicated, much, much more complicated than zakat. Why you don't have a system for zakat? And this is you have. Politically, I'm not going to enter that. You have to, to know why. You answer all these questions why. Then this is the foundation of Islamic economic. Is the, the, the second part is the triangle, the, the, the Islamic military triangle. The part three, which is very important, I have put up uh, something called the uh, transaction map theory. T and T. Transaction map theory. That theory, uh, with as an instrument, is an intellectual instrument. When you uh, understand it, master it, 
you would have to be able to distinguish between any transaction, either it is usually or not, and why. This transaction map theory is something new in Islamic economic or in economic in general. From this theory, if you understand it, master it, you will be able to see any transaction with this jungle of transaction. Either it is usually or not, which is a big problem for both Muslim and non-Muslim transaction map theory. What is it in short? It's recognizing the dual of creation that God has created thing, either money or goods. This goods, this good, this good, this good, this good. If you get a note, that's money. Then things has to be either money or goods. Very simple. That would give you two, uh, three probabilities. Either money for money, or goods for goods, or money for goods. Very simple. If you want to understand, and you have your heart with divine belief, you will find things very easy. Very simple. Either money for money, goods for good, or money for goods. They usually uh, more rather in money for money. You have to make it, read it in details. But in this one principle, one principle you have to understand, which actually is a is principle of law. If you put the law, what is the law try to achieve? Has an aim. If you go down the, the, in the street, one way system. This is a law. What is law for? To make traffic easy. Then any law is guaranteed to achieve the purpose or the aim. This is an Islamic principle in all Islamic rules. Do and don't. Why? Because in the area, the only way to achieve the purpose is following the rule of God. If you take that in the TMT, you will fully understand it, and you get it in details. Apply this to every transaction, you will find simply this is usually, or this is trend. The last uh, chapter was the economic efficient. I discussed in the prohibition of alcohol and gambling. And that itself, without that provision, you have an efficient economy. And Islam was very uh, shrewd and very sharp in prohibiting alcohol and gambling. You can see how much alcohol when you go to the supermarket and how this efficient in economy, causing in the economy and gambling. I put some material which is available to anyone to recognize the efficiency, efficiency of Islamic economy by prohibition, uh, alcohol, and gambling. I introduce as well because some people have difficult to understand what is uh, gambling. I would say the principle of gambling machine. Gambling machine. You know gambling machine? One day I was uh, see somebody playing with the machine, and he lost, and he kicked the machine by his hand. Of course, you playing with the machine, and you, you, you kick it at the end, you hurt yourself, and blame somebody else. It's a machine. It's a project. It's a profit entity. And you put the money in it, and you expect to win. I argue the principle of the machine. You can think about it. I think I, I exhaust the more than the 35 minutes, and I will give you the chance. If you have a question, I'll try my best, inshallah. Thank you all. Thank you, Salim. Thank you for the Muslim society. And I'm really uh, honored to be here with you. Thank you very much.
Uh, um, 